So today is Valentine's Day, otherwise, as I like to call it, fornication day, promiscuity day, adultery day, because Valentine's Day is a day where people like to use it to commit fornication, promiscuity, adultery. I mentioned that in my last video about how Valentine's Day is just a day of fornication and promiscuity and adultery. So that's one reason why Christians should not be celebrating this perverted holiday. But the second reason why Christians shouldn't be celebrating this holiday, which I sort of covered, I covered a bit in my last video about Valentine's Day, is the Catholic pagan history of this holiday. And Roman Catholicism is pagan, it's a pagan perversion of the Christian faith. Roman Catholicism is not the faith once delivered unto the saints. It's a Greek Roman perversion, a repackaging of Greek Roman paganism under the guise of Christianity. That's why a lot of their unscriptural practices are not found in the Word of God, but have the roots of paganism. Because Roman Catholicism is, a, is repackaged paganism, that's all it is. It's an abominable and pagan perversion and twisting of the Christian faith. So obviously, I forget your holidays like Christmas and that kind of stuff. It's they took pagan holidays and made them Christian. And Valentine's Day has its roots in Catholicism. I'm going to read you from an article from a Catholic website, catholiceducation.org, about the history of Valentine's Day. And they're saying, yeah, it came from Catholicism. It came from the this, this Saint Valentine's guy. I'm going to read it to you. It says, In the early martyrologies, three different Saint Valentines are mentioned, all sharing February 14th for a feast day. Unfortunately, the historical record is sparse. The first Saint Valentine's Valentine was a priest and a physician in Rome. He, along with Saint Marinet, Maris, and his family, uh, comforted, comforted the martyrs during the persecution of Emperor Calidus II, the Goth. Eventually, St. Valentine was also arrested, condemned to death for his faith, beaten with clubs, and finally beheaded on February 14, 270 AD. He was buried on the Flamian Way. Later, Pope Julius uh, built a basilica at that site which preserved St. Valentine's tomb. Archaeological digs in the 1500s and 1800s have found evidence of the tomb of St. Valentine. However, in the, tw in the 13th century, his relics were transferred to the church of St. Praxis, Praxis near the Basilica of St. Mary Major, where, where they remain today. Also, a small church was built near the Flamian Gate of Rome, which is now known as the Porta di del pa Popolo. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, which, but was called in the 12th century, the Gate of St. Valentine. As noted by the early British historian William Somerset, also known as William of Malmesbury, who ranks after St. Bede in authority. So, they're saying, you know, it came from, and I don't know, I don't know a whole lot about the St. Valentine, but the thing of, of making feast days after saints, it comes from paganism. You know, whether the St. Valentine's guy was saved or not, you're not supposed to have feast days after men. It's paganism. You know, Judaism does the same thing. Um, you know, all these pagan religions do the same thing. And, of course, Judaism, uh, you know, I will point this out. You know, the physical Israelites, the Jews, are still God's people. They are still the, the people of God, and God is not done with the nation of Israel. So we do reject the heresy of replacement theology. That being said, the religion of Judaism is a pagan perversion. Just like how Roman Catholicism is a pagan perversion of the Christian faith, Judaism, Talmudic Judaism, is a pagan perversion of the Old Testament Israelite religion, which Christianity actually is, is a completed form of the Old Testament religion. Again, there's a whole other video of itself, but Judaism, just like Catholicism, is a pagan, abominable and pagan perversion of the Old Testament religion, just like how Catholicism is a pagan perversion of the Christian faith. Continuing. The record of St. Valentine was the Bishop of Intermana, I hope I'm saying that right, now attorney, located 60 miles from Rome. Under the orders of perfect Plaxidus, I hope I'm saying that right too, he was too arrested, scourged, and decapitated, de decapitated again suffering persecution during the times of Enter Emperor Claudius II. The third St. Valentine suffered martyrdom in Africa, along with several companions. However, nothing further is known about the saint. In all these men, each named St. Valentine showed her heroic love for the Lord and his church. They're referring to Roman Catholicism. The church that Jesus Christ started is not the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church was started by Satan. That's what it was. It was started by Satan, and it will be the seat of the Antichrist during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because the Pope, you know, the Pope is essentially the Antichrist. He, he, he 
is operates under the under the spirit of an antichrist. And obviously, I do believe Pope Francis or a, a pope in the future might be the false prophet or will be the false prophet. But I do believe that the antichrist will be a pope-like figure because the pope is essentially a form of an antichrist. Continuing, the popular custom of showing love and affection on Saint Valentine's Day is almost a coincidence with the feast day of the saint. During the medieval age, a common belief in England and France was that birds began to pair on February 14th. Quote, halfway through the second month of the year, uh, Chapser wrote in his Parliament of Fowls in Old English, for this was on Saint Valentine's Day, when every fowl uh, cometh, the, oh, not good at reading older English, there to choose his mate. For this reason, that day was dedicated to lovers and promoted the sending of gifts, letters, and other, sorry, letters, gifts, and other signs of affection. Not good at reading on a computer, I do apologize. It, it kind of hurts my eyes, I you know, get messed up when I read. You know, just area I struggle with. It hurts my eyes and then, you know, makes it harder to read when your eyes are hurting and going blurry constantly. You know, but continuing. Another literary example of St. Valentine's Day remembrance or remembrances is found in Dame Elizabeth Bruce uh, in 1447, where she writes to the suitor, suitor John Paston of her daughter, Mercury, hope I'm saying that right too, uh, quote, a cousin mine uh, upon Monday is St. Valentine's Day and every bird choseth himself a mate. And if it like you to come on Thursday night and to make provision that you may abode till then, I trust to God that you shall speak to my husband and shall and I shall pray that we bring the matter to a conclusion. In turn, McGurry wrote to John, unto my right, uh, well beloved Valentine John Paston Squire, uh, but this be a, be, be, sorry, be this bill delivered, right, uh, reverend and worshipful, and my right, well beloved Valentine. I recommend me unto you, full heartily, desiring to hear of your welfare, and I beseech Almighty God uh, long for to preserve, sir, to preserve until His pleasure and your heart's desire. Uh, end the quote. While speaking of the um, amorous, again, I'm I'm really bad at reading on a computer, so just bear with me. It hurts my eyes, and you know. I might have to get glasses soon, who knows, but uh, continuing. Uh, Valentine's Day, no mention is made of the saint. So it's saying how there's no mention made of the saint on in that particular document. While it seems that the exchange of Valentine's is more the result of, sec of a secular custom rather than the memory of St. Valentine, is that the celebration has been further uh, paganized with cupids and the, and the like, and there's a Christian message that should be remembered the love of our Lord, the, um, depicted beautifully in the image of his most sacred heart, chapter and verse on that please, where most sacred heart, and again, Catholic paganism, they're talking about, oh, paganism, Valentine's Day got paganism, it was pagan from the start, because the Catholics borrowed it from the pagans, that's how it goes, again, Roman Catholicism is paganism repackaged, uh, the love of our Lord is, the, yeah, I already read that, uh, is a sacrificial, selfless, unconditional love, such as the love of, that each Christian is called to express, in his own life, for God and neighbor. Clearly, Saint Valentino matter is one, sh one showed such a love, bearing witness into the faith in his dedication as a priest and the offering of his own life in martyrdom. On this Valentine's Day, looking to the example of this great saint, each person should offer his, again his love to the Lord, uh, only for by doing so can he, pro can he properly um, love those who are entrusted to his care and to thy and any other neighbor. Each person should uh, again pledge to love those, love to those loved ones, praying for their intentions, promoting fidelity to them, and thanking them for their love in return. Never forget that Jesus said, "This is my commandment: love one another as I have loved you." There is no greater love than this, than to lay down life for one's friends. You know, John fifteen twelve to thirteen. Saint Valentine fulfilled this command, as and may we do the same. Again, it was hard to read the small letters with the, you know, eyes hurting, but, um, so they're saying, so they admit that it was, you know, paganized, but then, you know, we're going to Christianize it. See, Roman Catholicism, they always do this. They, they take pagan holidays and they Christianize them. That's what they did with Christmas, or better known as winter solstice. It's, it's a pagan holiday, but they, they Christianize it to, to supposedly witness to the pagans. Sure. So Valentine's Day is Catholic. According to the Catholic website, it's Catholic. And like I showed in the last video, it's a fornication 
promiscuity, adultery type holiday, but it's also Roman Catholic. And Bible believing Christians should not have anything to do with anything that is Roman Catholic. Because Roman Catholicism is identified in Revelation 17 and Revelation 18 as Mystery of Babylon, and it's going to be destroyed by God during the uh, time of Jacob's trouble. So, why would you want to have anything to do with a holiday that is not only clearly rooted in paganism, but is propagated by the mother harlot, the mother whore Roman Catholic Church? And that is the term the Bible uses, you know, the whore of Babylon. The, Bab the Mystery of Babylon Roman Catholic Church propagates this adulterous, fornicating, promiscuous holiday. So don't be deceived. It is Roman Catholic, so avoid anything, any holiday that is supposedly Christian, but is paganized, which is what Catholics do. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.